Okay, we are back again. I thought that was like an uh, important phone call, but nope, it was not an important phone call at all. <laughs> um, it was spam. Like, most of the stuff I get is spam, so... Yay! I wanted to go do one more thing before we get it started. Um, so I'm working on follower goals, and I, I really want to, my first donation goal is like $500. Um, $500 will help me, like, get, oh, I actually prefer to get like seven, dollars $800. But $500 is my goal for this month. Um, if I can get that, then I can, um, start building my computer. Um, because really I need something that's like, you know, good for editing and stuff, and I'm going to need to buy a monitor and everything, too. Um, I think I have one monitor, but I'd like to do a double monitor setup. Uh, and then we'll talk about, like, getting more cameras and fleshing, chefing awesome out and doing, like, some unique, um, cooking, uh, things, you know, like, uh, Being able to, um, like afford unique items, doing like seafood and like maybe boil some real lobsters, stuff that's fun. Like maybe we could, um, I'd like to do shoots outside of the home, like where I go places. Um, you know. This. Just a stain. Okay, so for our bowl over here, we are going to. I'm gonna put this over here. Get a knob of ginger. I'll peel that knob of ginger. Dirty? What 
This is one of my favorite knives, it's a petty knife, although I kind of fudged up the tip. I don't know if you can see that I fudged the tip up on it. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Better with this camera. Anyway. Doesn't matter. Yeah, this stuff is like super woody. But what am I gonna do? It's so good. I mean, as long as it's not moldy, it's good because the stuff dries out and then you can just grind it whole, like if you dry, you know. And then you have dried ginger. It's kind of in between right now. But usually, if it's not in a controlled area, it's going to go moldy. If you don't put it in a nice dry area or a place where there's dehumidifier or anything like that. I wish I composted my work. We compost everything, so it's a, um, I'm not used to that. I've heard of it in certain restaurants. But I'm not used to it at all. All right, I just wanna grind it right into here. I think that should be a suitable amount of ginger. I like ginger. I think everybody kind of likes ginger. Oh, I forgot to add that to the thing. Mm -hmm. Certain things I keep track of. So, I know how to improve my streams and stuff. Um, So that way, like, you got uh, good streams. Good stream. It's not just like the quality of, of the actual quality of the stream, which I know is probably lacking it a little bit because, like, really have like the best um, setup. But I'm working on it. I'm totally working on it. I'd like to have that camera over here. Or... I wonder if I could do like a... Whoop. No, it's as good as it gets, really. go out for a pokey walk. Not sure where we're gonna go yet. If I get done with the stream at like six, seven, we could probably still make it to the mall or something. I was in uh, Midtown Detroit the other night and um yeah it's Midtown. Uh -oh. Huh? Oh. I was in Midtown last, uh, a couple nights ago, uh, for this night out for safety and liberation thing that my group I belong to is hosting. Um, it's a restaurant group. And, um, they, um, there's so many Pokestops out there. So many, but I'm like, kind of like, it's Midtown Detroit. I mean, like that area was like Wayne State Campus, which is not that bad per se. But, uh, I don't feel safe walking around with my phone out, like not paying attention. I mean, it's still, people get mugged all the time. Like in that area, what is it? Um, a waiter I worked with, or a server, the correct with that, server I worked with, 
um, lived in that area, and he got mugged and shot, and then he drove himself to the hospital. <laughs> and I don't want to get shot playing Pokemon Go. I'm not saying, like, Detroit is um, unsafe. People need to go there and make it safe um, and make it acceptable for everybody to go there. Um, but I'm also kind of in that thing where it's like, uh, I also don't have, want to pay for medical bills if I can be strong. Sorry. Eh, I am taking precautions for myself. I mean, it is what it is. We're just going to chop this end piece up a little bit and throw it in there. But, I mean, it's nice. If I was with someone else, sure. I mean, you know, you got your strength in numbers, etc. And, um, I have muscle. Well, maybe they won't fuck with me. But, I don't ever want to put myself in that situation where it's like, oh, yeah. Turn down the wrong corner. To an alley. I mean, crime, it's gotten a lot better in Detroit. I mean, it doesn't always used to be that shitty. But when you think about the Wayne State area, is that we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do like, yeah, we're only doing like one chicken breast, so three cloves should be good. <laughs> More than good, actually. I just like things really garlicky, so. It's not an issue for me. Um, so like, I like Detroit, and I like um, that people are making it livable. I don't like how it's mostly corporations making things livable. Um, they, um, kicking out a lot of the small business owners who happen to be black. Oh man, I was duped. They're all smaller pieces than a big piece. I hate when that happens. So there's a lot of gentrification going on. Especially in Midtown, and it's kind of, ugh, you know, like with Jack White opened, um, Third Man Records last year, Midtown, I think they just celebrated their one year anniversary here, um, which I haven't, I haven't even been yet, love Jack White, I've been to this one down in, um, Asheville, which is like a hole in the wall. I haven't been to this one. It's supposed to it's huge. It's got like a performance space and everything. Um, but like, why not Southwest? I mean, I know Southwest is like all fucked up and to, to be nice about it, but hey, Southwest needs that love. Like, it could be the slows of that part. I mean, slows, my former workplace uh, rebuilt basically Corktown. Not really. I mean, it was really like a culmination of things because I remember Corktown kind of always having that spirit. The cool thing about Slows is they brought people to Corktown, not just to live, because there's a lot of people who are already living there because there's a historical homes district, kind of like Indian Village. There isn't anything around there but homes, nice big old mansions. That's about it, really. But, um, yeah, like, Jack White, why don't you, uh, do something cool in Southwest, like, where you were born and shit. You know? Let's throw this one out. It's like, baby. Sorry. Now my hands are going to smell like garlic for a week. Oh. Come on. Sticky. Chop the end off. Anyway. It's 
So that's my take on Midtown and Pokey Stops. <laughs> but no, the, the thing I went to was very interesting because it was all about, I think I was talking about this in my other stream. But they were like kind of like doing this hippie spiritual shit though, and that I don't agree with because I'm not a hippie or spiritual at all. I'm fairly atheist. And I don't care, you could do what you want, but I just it has no meaning to me whatsoever. Like, they're like, feel the energy in the room with your ancestors. So it's like cool and all if I believed in that shit, but I don't. So it's just sort of like, let's get down to business. Let's actually figure out how we're going to solve the problems of the city, which did not get done at all whatsoever, but not like, you know, I think what needs to happen is you need to move people there. The thing is, like, one guy brought up a really good thing, called it landlordism, where it's like the landlords kind of like, uh, are fucking people out of their money, which is happening. I've seen it happen to a lot of friends and family. Haven't had it happen personally to me. But that's because I do a lot of research before I move. But, um, they, um, people have been kicked out randomly because they're like, oh, we just don't want you here anymore. We want to raise the rent, like, couple hundred dollars but they're not actually you know putting anything into the building of uh, rats cockroaches bed bugs like most people I've heard who moved into the city at well with like bed bugs for sure get an issue there's always something water bugs oh landlords that don't come out and fix stuff you know, it seems to me like that's privileges that you get in the burbs, which is a white thing, I would assume, for the most part. But it's, I think, more of a classism thing. Because if you could afford to live at the burbs, as versus the city, but now they're making it ex expensive in the city because they know all these rich white kids are going to Wayne State now because it's cool to live in the making a difference. Back in my day, when we were kids, the reason why we lived in the, like my friends moved to Detroit was because it was super cheap and you could have like parties and raves. I never really uh, partook in those activities because I'm very lame, but um, that is why they moved there because they knew, oh, hey, there's no cops, so let's like fuck off, you know? Nowadays, I mean, kids move down there because they want to be cool. So, uh, I think it's, uh, gonna, I'm not going to add all of this. I'm just going to add, like, maybe that much. Let's taste it. I'm, this is probably going to be gross. Mmm. No. Mmm. Mmm. It's very sweet. It's kind of sugary. Um, I'm guessing, like, all the breaking down and the alcohol... And the the, the 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 salt brings out the sh the sweetness and the sugar and the rice. The fermentation brings out all the sugars in it. But yeah, it looks like uh, oatmeal or kind of vomity. <laughs> gonna add a little bit of. We're just gonna use regular old cucumin. But if you are uh, one of those gluten-free peoples, feel free to use tamari. Basically the same thing, they just brew it without the, the wheat. Although, I don't know if the shiokoji is... You have to look and see if there's gluten-free shiokoji though. Really strong though, so you have to think about it as like okay, we can put in the chicken, and so forth. Mm 
Anyway, like, Detroit, interesting place. I've worked there for about five years. I've lived in the neighboring city, Dearborn, for pretty much my entire life. Uh, several, couple stints elsewhere. Uh, fudge. I want to get a better, a different kind of mood for this. I don't want to get my veggie cutting board. So, I mean, I know a lot of people who live in the city and I know like their problems and their issues. I know I said cutlets. Traditionally, it's like nuggets. I was watching like the Wakako Zake um, anime. Because there's anime and the TV show. And uh, I watch both. But I haven't seen all of both. Um, I want to make these bites kind of small because I don't want to uh, have them take forever and have raw pieces, stuff like that. Also, they're going to get like super marinated super quick, so. But she did a special on fried chicken. It's like I eat it with everything all the time. I love it, but I'm gonna get fat, but I don't care. That's how I feel. I'm already kind of fat. with it for a second here. I know a lot of like Food Network stars would tell you put it in a plastic bag and then marinate it overnight. Yeah, because the plastic bag is supposed to seal in all the fermenting and stuff. But since we're only gonna like we're only like fermenting it. We're not fermenting it. We're just letting it sit for like probably 20 minutes. Half an hour. It should be good enough. It's got alcohol in it. So we don't really want it to be, um, sit too long because it'll start cooking the chicken and then it'll start getting kind of dry when you cook it. So that's the thing. So like, it's a Guy Fieri cutting board, but 
I don't know where with that. I almost was on his show once. I'm not lying when I said that, but almost was on Hell's Kitchen. I'm gonna have to go again. Uh, tryouts are on the 22nd, so I gotta get, I, I gotta get, fill out the forms, resume. I could always send in a video. Should probably do that. That'd probably be better. Or I could do both. I think, like, I messed up, like, one of their visual questions. Uh, I have a marker. I think I messed up one of their visual food questions that I have, like, the worst eyesight ever, and I decided to wear my glasses instead of my contacts. I think that's personally, so it was cilantro. It's like, well, they look alike, alike. They don't smell alike. It's not like I could like smell it. It was a picture, you know. So that is some shit. But that's not why I didn't get it. I didn't get it because I didn't swear enough. And they feed you. So, so what they do in in reality television is they feed you lines. So like they're like. And they feed you reactions that they want, too. Ooh, I'm telling you the secrets. Um. What they, they want you to do is, like, they'll be like, okay, how do you fucking feel about this fucking shit when someone does, uh, does it come into work on time? Something like that, like, try to get, they, they say it in, like, an aggressive attitude, they, they swear a lot, because it's like, we want you to swear, because they fuck, say fuck them. It's like, for me, it's like, uh, sometimes they say it, sometimes they don't, because I work in kitchens, so yeah, we do swear a lot, but it's like, for me to show anger, I, I'm not like that, I'm kind of like, uh, I have to actually be angry, I can't think of, like, Oh yeah, there's one time someone came in late and I cared. I don't really care most of the time. So it's like they want you to have a reaction that might not be... They want you to exaggerate everything. So I'm trying to think. Now the Guy Fieri episode thing. I, uh... I bombed that because I had no idea what Guy Fieri's uh, grocery games was. And I try to like get myself like acclimated to it and be like, okay, this is what it is. But it just seems like they picked random people to be on the show. And I, I don't know, I just bombed it. Probably because I have the same thing that's going on right now with my ear. I'm doing that, probably. I like this ear thing. I don't think it's just like a sinus problem. Alright, so this is my uh, Arosia Evaporia. Okay, I don't know. I'm not gonna do it this time. Uh, my rice cooker. It is a aroma brand. Like anybody cares. I don't know. I'm not getting paid to do this, by the way. Not getting paid. But. I figure it's something we could do while it's marinating. We could take this out, rinse it out, and make it rice. And then we could start, you know, getting all the other shit together. Alright. Quick start guide. You're gonna need that. So. As you all may know, I got a pop-up coming up on next Saturday. So it's sushi related. So of course, like I needed to buy a rice maker because I didn't have. I have a rice maker in the garage somewhere, but it's not this big. This is huge. Uh, 
Um, most uh, rice makers, like Japanese rice makers. Go for usually cost like two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars. Around there is how much it costs. It's ridiculous. Like, why do they cost that much, right? I don't know. But this one cost me $38. So, I'm going to see. It's kind of like a little steaming basket for veggies, which we're not going to need. Okay. And there's the, the plate. We're going to go. I'm going to go plug it in over here. And we're going to rinse out this basket and see how much rice. Oh, it comes with a trusty little cup. I think this would be enough rice. Oh, and a little rice spoon thing, too. Make sure to set it in there flat. Gotcha. Hopefully this thing doesn't blow up or burn the rice. Add rice first. It out. It's a nice Teflon coating. Let's see if it's worth the $36 I paid for it. Okay, so it says it's measurements. Add water and then push a button. That's it. Cool. Two to ten of these. And then I have to add the water up to the certain line. This is going to probably make a lot of rice.
using cold water like always. That's gonna take a lot of work. Fill up this bucket and then fill it up. I know I didn't rinse it or anything. This time, I don't know. rice sitting and uh hope it doesn't burn or explode yay <laughs> Guess we can always play. I take a look at what's up with my plants today. Let's do a virtual gardening. I miss having real garden. So much fun. Surely this and I don't know if there's a delay or not today. Actually, I should probably figure that out. Get some leaves. Didn't have to water or anything. Oh, I didn't kill it. Hoping like tonight it won't be so. I don't know. Where's a good? I guess I could go to the mall. I don't know. Darn. Everybody's 
water today. Ice. Alright. That's it for my virtual garden. So. Yeah, rice cookers are awesome. This is a new one, so ooh, I hope I'm gonna try to see if I got a lag going on or not. Seems like it only happens during my uh, cooking streams. Probably because of all the stuff I got hooked up to this little computer. Okay, so next we're going to get like our breading system set up and everything. So we're going to be using panko breadcrumbs. Um, these are whole wheat ones. I don't know why. I didn't pick this up. My boyfriend did. Um, I hope it's not going to weigh it down because a lot of stuff that's whole wheat kind of sucks. So we're going to get that together. It's like we're doing deep fried stuff this week. Not necessarily on purpose, but I think it's just sort of how it ended up being. So, okay. Water or something down here. Anyway. Uh, Get this together. Today we're going to use cornstarch instead of flour. Oh my gosh, it's hot. <laughs> That's a bummer. Yeah, like, um, I think my Meyer has it, but, like, it's, like, hard to find. Like, you gotta, like, search. Not all the Meyers around here have it, but I think the one by me does, oddly enough. I don't know why they have seaweed for sushi, but, but they do. Oh my gosh. It is so hot today. All right, so we're going to use cornstarch. Doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be Argo brand. It could be whatever brand of cornstarch you want. And we're going to make an egg wash too. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, um, but the t to me, like the Twitch delay, it's not like, I don't know. Yeah. I have a switch delay and then there's like a delay with my computer and stuff. I think it's like my computer is kind of slows stuff down. Uh, occasionally I have to restart. But like, I always like check it on my phone to see like where I'm at. So if you ever look at CB on my phone, it's probably because I'm trying to check my stream. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna do. Oh, yeah. Cornstarch always has to do that. Cornstarch. You know, take what you think you need. Like, start out like small. Um, I mean, cornstarch isn't that expensive, but like, why waste, right? That should be enough. Oh, I gotta cut. Yeah, there's 
bit of a delay. Hopefully, hopefully it's not too bad of a delay. I'll try to type my messages if I can. Woo! I used to have moderators, but nobody wants to mod for me anymore. So they don't have lives. Well, they don't. They just, they're lazy. They don't want to, like, stick around for several hours and watch me do my thing. Panko. It's a weird panko. I'm gonna tell you what. It's usually panko's like nice and long strands. This is just sort of crumbly. But whatever. If it works, it works. Yeah, uh, the weather, oh, Michigan. This is what we call in the industry the three-step breading process. Because you go, uh, what you call it, <laughs> your flour or your cornstarch, your egg wash, then your uh, breading. Or if you're doing chicken, it's usually flour, wash, flour. And you can use egg wash, but egg wash usually ends up with like a really eggy kind of crust, you just want to use like buttermilk or milk or water. Buttermilk at least will give it nice, you know, tanginess. Cool! Awesome! Yeah, we need to get more rain. It's been kind of like We've been getting uh, a fair amount of rain here the past couple days, but not, not enough. Like, it just evaporates too quickly. Like, we get some flooding, but nothing. For, uh, it's, just, it's just still too hot, like, for it to stick around, you know? Like, if it was, like, in the 70s, like, our plants would actually get watered. Water to it. I got all that set. I got. I think I got a nice emulsification there today. All right. So today. to use a pot for my deep frying experience. Peanut oil. Peanut oil is kind of pricey, but I just wanted to use this stuff up because I thought it was going bad down. <laughs> you know, like, really this stuff only has, um, it says it's good till 2017, but like, depending on how you store it, I think 
Wiggly Wiggly. Yeah, it's like the best way to like check on your face, like to make sure everything's okay. Look at this. Oh. Wow, this thing's cooking pretty fast, actually. I got to smell the rice already. So I'm going to wait till the rice is done before we move on to the rest of it. Um, I got my burner on low, slowly heating up my oil over here. Um, I'm going to get a plate together. I always like to have a plate with a paper towel on it. It's always like, you know. When you're done with your whatever you're deep frying, you put it on there, it kind of soaks up the oil, excess oil before you put it on whatever plate you're going to serve. Or just usually let people serve themselves. I don't know, really get that fancy. Oh man, Mississippi. It must be like super hot down there. It's crazy. I've never been to Mississippi. Been to Alabama, uh, Georgia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, pretty much everywhere except, yeah. <laughs> cool. So, waiting on that rice before we start doing that chicken. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, what, 98 degrees up here in Michigan right now, and I'm like dying. <laughs> but, like, I can't imagine. Like, I went to just even like Tennessee, I went to Tennessee last year, and, um, my god, I could not deal with it. <laughs> it was so hot. I can't believe I like made it out of there. Alive. And I'm used to like, working in kitchens too, which is like super hot all the time. I mean, it just I think you just like hit like an age maybe. I don't know. Maybe like 30 is the magic number where everything like starts to hurt constantly. I don't know. So that's what I was dealing with. I really want a soda. I don't know that's bad, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Gonna get tasty a bit here. I don't know why. I just I don't really drink pop all that much, but uh, lately I've been letting myself splurge a little bit, and this is like the first two liter I bought in like months. 
because uh, I don't drink soda. But I think it's just maybe the heat, like, like I want liquid and uh, it's like a it's like a meal in one kind of thing. Like I need to like get all those uh, all the sugar replenished that I'm sweating out. I don't know. Feel kind of like a weirdo, always like drinking constantly on stream too. But it's like I don't have any air conditioning in here. All I mean other than the portable air conditioner, which only works so much. My leg hurts. Oh, trying to stretch my leg out. <sighs> I'm actually already at that one. I think I really want to just like pop in my head in there and see like how far it is done. <laughs> but I think we know better. Because I need one more plate. I always need to like garnish stuff, but I don't think that this is something that really needs to get garnished all that much. OBS is a pain in my blood. Fortunately, it's the only thing that I know that works on Macs right now. So, that's a thing. Alright, I think that this is been long enough. It's been like an hour, so I think it's been an hour. I don't really want to rinse it because I want it to keep all the, the good chunks on it. So this is our chicken. It's marinated in uh, shiokoji. Uh, you got garlic, you got ginger, you got a little bit of soy, and a little bit of black pepper in there. What we're going to do is we're going to bread them, which I have my breading order here. Oh no! We're going to bread these things, and then we're going to fry these things. pop in the one. It's it coated, but not too coated because you don't want it to be a dough ball. That. That. Always like the last one, like get your dry hand to at least cover it so it's not so bad. Always keep one hand kind of good. Do that. So, this is not going to be at my pop up. This is just something I've been wanting to make for the last like week, and I kept pushing back the stream. Like, I had computer problems last week, and I was supposed to do that. Cool. 
I want to go to Louisiana. I think I've passed through North Carolina, kind of. I think. I've been, yeah, I've passed through North Carolina, like the tip of it. Anyway, I, these are not going to be on my pop-up. These are just something I've been wanting to make because I bought that Shio Koji because I was like, oh, hey, my boyfriend found an article about it for our website and uh, I was like, hey, I, I've never actually heard of this slash cooked with it. And it's actually a fairly popular condiment kind of thing in um, Japan. Uh, used in a lot of cooking for marinades and whatnot. So I was like, huh, I'd like to use it in something. And I figured chicken is like, you know, chicken is like one of those everybody foods. So if it works with chicken, then I could probably use it with beef. I wouldn't, chicken's cheaper. I don't want to use it on like a good like cut of beef. Neat like so. Okay, there you go. It's good to have the sink nearby so you could always wash your hands. I wish I had my aprons. I don't know where any of my aprons are. Because uh, I always feel like I'm getting dirty on stream, so I don't I try not to wear anything nice anymore. Unless I could find my aprons. And maybe, but I'm not going to wear any of my super nice stuff. I'll save that for like my gaming, my gaming stream. I didn't make a whole lot. I trading myself to limit my the amount of food I make on stream because like when I first started doing this like back in March I think it was or actually I think it might have been February um I could only do it like once a week or once every other week because I was making like these grandiose huge ass streams where I was like I ended up cooking for like the longest one was maybe like four or five hours because I was making like full on three course meals. That's like ah, and I don't mind doing that, but it's also kind of like it's expensive and it's also like uh, what? It's like the time I was like cooking, I was like, oh yeah, it's like 10 o'clock at night, let's all get up and eat. <laughs> just because it was like the best like hours in which I could do it and then like I ended up getting switched to like doing a lot of night shifts and then my schedule was all over the place and then now I got a different job so I can do all the things that I've been wanting to do you know so follow your dreams do, do, do what you want, you know? Don't, um... Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Don't let money... You know, influence you. You know. Do what you need to do. Do what you feel is right, do what you want to do. You know what I mean? Like, don't, uh, don't let others bring you down, because that's, that's one thing for sure, like, a lot of people are always going to be like, you're crazy, why are you doing this? Uh, or, oh, ha ha ha, you want to do that for a living? 
Like, uh, I used to want to be a film director and I should have stuck with it, but... Now nah, I'm kind of glad I didn't because I think film is dead, for sure. It doesn't move me like it used to. Uh, there's just... The industry is different now. It's, it's geared towards more like... YouTube and quick stuff and I think that's where it's at now it's like short form man like people don't have the attention spans for long ass movies and if they do it's gonna have to be like superhero related or something you know okay So, was it? I was talking about living the dream, right? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, like, do what you want to do. Follow your dreams. Um, I mean, you may or may not succeed, but hey, it's really all in mo half. What was it? Ugh. What's that Woody Allen quote? Like, something like 90% of success is just showing up. <laughs> it's true. Like, if you just stay motivated and you keep doing it, you keep, keep showing up to practice, keep showing up on stream, keep uh, doing what you're doing. Eventually you'll succeed. It's just there's no quick fix. You can't just, you know, you can't just instantly be famous or instantly have money or instantly have a good job. Instantly have the love of your life. You have to work on those things. Like relationships are work. Uh, life is work. You just gotta you want something, you're going to have to work for it. You can't just sit around and do nothing. I mean, you can. And I know people who do, and they're very happy, but you have to be happy with, you know, not having the internet, having, like, you know, hand-me-downs. You have to be comfortable with that lifestyle. And not everybody can do that. And I could cross to those people who could do that shit, where they just, like, you know, basically back out in the corner, and then they come home, they drink a 40 and go to bed. They get their bills covered, they don't give a shit. They're not going to school, there's no ambition. And that's fine. Teach their own. Look at my chicken nuggets. They look like chicken nuggets, don't they? I mean, they basically are Japanese style chicken nuggets. Alright, so we want to test our oil. Um, you can always get one of those oil thermometers if you want, but I never do because I'm used to cooking, so that's what I do. So, I wish I could like, do something with this hair, but it's just so hot. It's actually not too bad since I have like the air conditioner right on me, but It could be worse. Hi. Hello. Okay. I just want to make sure I was catching my voice. Which is probably catching mostly my air conditioner. So, hopefully the classical music is drowning that out. Oh. This is done. Cool. Let's 
sushi, I would be trapped. mixing this and cooling it right away, but we're not doing sushi today. Oh, you're 